welcome back to Swinging at Chins, <clears throat> Premier League podcast from across the pond. I am joined, as always, by Aaron in yet another retro Austin Villa Love kit. It. Got that, that Mueller kit. <laughs> oh, buddy, man. The Good 90s honey, were just know. a style that I do not understand. It doesn't have to be understood. <laughs> <laughs> Also joined by Woodsy, who is in, I believe, a retro Liverpool kit. 1991. There it is. There the you last go. Time, uh, they won the Prem prior to uh, Klopp uh, coming. So good year. Believe it or not, I am actually in a retro Arsenal kit. You cannot <laughs> buy this version anymore because Adidas screwed up. Oh, really? But was yeah. it, can I it only it has is? 32 matches. Of the Invincible yeah. season on the side instead of 38. And they stopped all sales and you can't get it. So this is now our collector's item. I probably shouldn't even be wearing it. Probably true. As you say, put that, that in a frame and don't touch it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm hoping it's free. I'm hoping I get the refund. Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> it also has a Champions League patch. So after next year, that could be a massive <laughs> collector's item for Arsenal. <laughs> Depends on how everything goes. All right, on the show today, we pick up where we left off. We have our overachievers, our underachievers. You get our team of the season. And there's no good, like, what the worst team of the season is. Like, there's a team of the season. There's no good, like, worst of the season. But anyway, you're getting both. Uh, There's a lot of arguments to be had. I'm not going to be happy by the time we're done. We did learn through talking about this. I am much better at picking out bad players than I am about picking out good players. (laughs) Because there were a ton of arguments on all of my best picks my worst picks everyone's like yeah 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 no that works so (laughs) there's that but first of all the major thing that's going on in football today is um saudis want all of your unwanted players whether they can legally take them whether they have ties to your club whether they have any of that uh woodsy i'm gonna kick it over to you yeah it's uh i mean we're, we're we may not be realizing it now, but it's it's likely a, a big uh, a altering moment for the sport. Whether whether we're we're really thinking about it in depth, the way I think a lot of journalists are finally starting to do to do it. Uh, I think it's you know four or five six years a little too late uh, in all honesty. But um, I think what we're seeing is money has influence over everything, and no matter what happens with the sport, no matter what happens with players. Agents, coaches, teams, fans, nothing matters. Nothing matters because it all comes back down to money. Um, so I think what we're seeing now, we have the Ruben Neves thing that came out today. Uh, basically what's happening is, you know, we got ways that Saudi Arabian owners are figuring out how to circumvent uh, financial fair play. And they're doing it. I mean, it's pretty clever when you think about it, but they're doing it so blatantly obvious uh, it's it's a slap into the face for it's a slap to the face of everybody that watches the sport. Um, I mean, let, let's basically... let's start off just a little bit before then, because this yeah. all started with Chelsea and so everyone they say Todd Bowley owns Chelsea. Todd Bowley is definitely the American face that they put on Chelsea, and Todd Bowley has skin in the game, mm-hmm. but he is not the only people who own Chelsea. He did not have six hundred and eleven million dollars just to spend on transfers after buying a club. Correct. Um, he is backed in part by a Saudi owned business, majority owned. I guess, majority, majority owned. Um, Chelsea needs to offload a hundred million pounds worth of players to make FFP work. They just got 60 to 65. I don't know if add ons count with Arsenal picking up Kai Havertz today, but Hudson Adoy, uh, Zayich, I think there was Kulabali. We're all going to go to the Dante, Saudi league. They went for free, but he still went. Yeah, he but he still went. There was something in there. And they were all going to go to the Saudi league to make sure that Chelsea's able to make FFP. That was bad enough. And now on top of this, the Ruben Neves thing came out today. And that's, I think that's the icing on the cake there. That's the cherry on top that basically is going to get this thing. There, there's, I, I got to go back to what Gary Neville said this morning. Um, I don't know if you guys caught it. Gary Neville basically laid it out like there has to be an embargo. There has to be some type of halt to whatever's happening because it's it's blatantly obvious. I mean, I mean to be honest with you, if, if it's a you know Stevie Wonder is going to come out here right now and be like that, that seems like cheap. And and 
I can't tell you he's not white because he's, he's not. So just so just so we're clear, because I don't think we actually touched on what the Ruben Nevis thing is. Yeah, Ruben Nevis is being bought by Al Nasir or one of the teams. I don't remember which one. And it looks like he is going to be immediately loaned to Newcastle, mm-hmm. which means that 50 million pounds yeah. that was supposed to be paid um, is being paid by the Saudi club so that Newcastle United don't break financial fair play rules in order to get um, other players. Like it looks like they're just about to sign Sandro Tonali for 70 million euros. So <laughs> that's 120 million or that's roughly 110 million pounds being altered right there. And only 60 of it's going to count. Yeah. That's basically what we're talking That's, about. And I think this is the bridge too far. I think this is when it becomes too obvious. All right. I, I feel like they would have got away with like, all right, Chelsea, you want to offload a bunch of players that you don't want to the Saudi leagues. Well, Hey, they're already doing that anyway, you know, but now, now this flip, I mean, there've been times where a player has been bought and then immediately loaned. Usually it's back to the team that did the selling and that's part of the agreement. Um, that's a, Hey, we don't want this guy gone, but we know you want him. If you give us money now, he could be a little bit cheaper. We want to use him. This is a straight. I'm using, you know, I'm paying you over here and I'm using the player over here and it's still me. It's still my money. It's still uh, a team is directly benefiting a team that is owned by the same teams is directly benefiting from this type of stuff. And it's just, Ugh. It's dirty. It's, I would have thought I'd be happy to have an American owner who seems to just not be able to spend enough money. Hey, it could be worse. It could be Liverpool. We're thirty. They're, our owners took thirty-seven million pounds from us. Oh, everybody took money from everybody. At that point, you could be Leicester, where they took hey, the money and nothing the last came back. Five years. Yeah, right. There's only one team that spent less than us in the Premier League. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, true. That's true. Article today is stupid, <laughs> but spent less or net spend less. Um, I guess it's the amount, or I'm sorry, it's the amount of money that the owners put into the club. The owners took out, uh, actually get made 37 million pounds from Liverpool. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Huh. Yeah, Man- Manchester City apparently only uh, put in. They put in 81 million, which only I right now. That's that's not true. <laughs> Apart from the fact, you know, that Eddie had airlines and the Eddie had and just all of that. Yeah, the Eddie had Eddie had yoga sponsorship. You'll see on their uh, jerseys next year. All right, uh, Aaron, do you have anything you want to add? I feel uh, like we t- touched on most of it. Just no, I mean, it's blah, just this is awful. We hate it. No, it feels terrible. I mean, uh, in the group chats, I've been saying it. This doesn't feel right. None of this is fair. Is obvious word it's just a disgusting feeling that like i'm all for players getting their money right like these players who are actually getting transferred and getting millions of dollars fine i get it that but this whole debacle that's unfolding is is just it's raunchy it's dirty it makes you feel wrong and, and hopefully somebody steps in and says, no, we can't let this happen, or else it's just going to be an avalanche that they'll never stop. Agree. And yep. the thing and is, you're not going to see the thing. You're not going to see UEFA. And you're not going to see FIFA step in. So who is it? It's got to be governments, you think, right? I, I, who's left? It would have to be the English government, right? Like they you, can't. Think, well, I mean, but then again, you from a Premier League standpoint, the FA, the FA is the one who brought all the charges against City. True. From a Premier League standpoint, the FA and the FA can always say, no, you can't sign. You can't. We're not going to sanction that transfer. Mm. You know, La Liga does it all the time where they will not allow a player to be transferred if they don't agree with X, Y, and Z, if the money didn't actually change hands, whatever. Yeah. The FA could be the ones to step up. It doesn't have to be UEFA and it doesn't have to be FIFA. It should, but we all know that it won't. Yeah, right. um, so then it becomes the FA. It could also be the Premier League. The Premier League could step up and tell the other teams you can't do this, except for right now, enough teams were getting enough of the pie, and a rising tide, you know, raises all ships. It, from from a Premier League standpoint, Roman Abramovich buying Chelsea was one of the best things that ever happened to the teams in the Premier League. Roman Abramovich buying Chelsea was one of the worst things that happened in football. But from a Premier League standpoint, we want to make a bunch of money. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
it stopped being the United and Arsenal and sometimes Liverpool show. And at the time, sometimes Liverpool, Liverpool was doing very well in Europe and what have you, but it stopped being the three team league. And suddenly everyone got better. And then we had the top four and the top four was always the same teams. And then it became the top five and then the top six. And now we're looking at a top seven. It, you know, if Roman Abramovich doesn't buy Chelsea, I don't think that the Emirates buys City. And it, whether we like it or not, City becoming this incredibly good team has been good for the Premier League. The Premier League's the richest sport in the world, and it's not close. And everybody gets, I mean, just the TV money alone. You get more money for finishing last just in TV rights than you get for winning La Liga. <laughs> it's 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 massive. So yeah, why would we stop it? But now, now you have entire states that are going to be taking away money from established teams and the Cronkies and the Fenway Sports Groups and these other teams can step forward and say, no, let's put a halt to it. So th- that's one of the things where because a lot of people are saying, well, everyone was okay with Roman Abramovich did it. Well, yeah. Everyone was okay when Roman Abramovich did it. He was an oligarch, but it was one guy, and it wasn't as egregious. And everyone was kind of okay with City doing it. But as much as City like to buy teams, I, they've never taken a Ruben Neves player, sold him off to another league, and then loaned him right back to their team. That's true. You know that that's not happened yet. And yeah, th- there's no good way to hide it. Some of it is apathy. I mean, a lot of it's apathy. A lot of it's not paying attention. Woodsy started off with, you know, we should have been talking about this six, seven years ago. I would argue we should have been talking about it almost 20 years ago because of Brown Vich bought Chelsea in 0405. Mm-hmm. You know, that was when all this crap really, really started if we want to go back to it. But now that I think there's more of an incentive for everyone else to finally pump the brakes on it because now everyone else isn't going to be making money. Europe makes you too much money now. You know, FFP regulations unfortunately help out the bigger guys as much as they hurt them. You know, we always use them to say this is going to be the sanctions that stop the big teams, but it's all based on your revenue. So Arsenal will always get to spend more money than Luton town because Luton town plays in someone's backyard. You know, it's just, it's, you're never going to have the revenue, which is why you see these big stadiums get built. This, I don't know. I don't know. I have hope that the FA will do something. Most of that hope is because the FA at least came out with saying, hey, City, here's 115 times you screwed up. There hasn't been any punishment from that, but at least they said it. You know, they're not completely turning a blind eye. I I could even see that if anybody's going to have some backlash, um, if anyone's going to come and try to Come after the Saudis. Come after you know. Obviously, because you got to think who's who's got each other's backs at this point. Chelsea, United, and or United, maybe United, depending on how who who ends up owning them in the near future. Uh, but Chelsea, City, True. Newcastle. You know, those are the te- th- the three teams that are going to back each other. They're going to go with wherever each other's going to go. So the rest of the clubs. I mean, Arsenal, American owners. Liverpool, American owners. Fulham, American owners. Uh, 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 I believe Crystal no Crystal Palace is an American owner. But who bought Villa, Aaron? Uh half and half, uh half American and an Egyptian. Yep. And uh and Leeds just got owned. I mean they're not in the Prem anymore, but Leeds just got bought by an American ent- entity. So uh those I think everyone outside of that little tight knit group that those three teams at least has to come together and do something and talk to the Premier League. I, I don't think the FA will will listen to this yet. I think if it goes to the Premier League first. I think the Premier League will say, "Let's see if an F- FA investigation is the next the next route." But I, I gotta I gotta believe that the amount of money that's going to go between these big clubs, their smaller clubs, and the money that's going to be tossed to the the higher ups, you know, the the governing bodies that oversee all this, the money that goes that way is the most important money to find out because how much of the money, uh, you know, how much they have in Saudi Arabia, unlimited amount, basically. How much of that is going to the higher ups to make sure that things stay where they need to stay? That's that's what I think is follow the money trail, and that's where I think we'll we'll end up getting, um, and we'll actually have you know some resemblance of what the league used to be. I agree, and I mean you, you bring up I mean Bill Foley as well, Bournemouth. Yeah. Um. You you bring up 
American. It's I don't even think it's just American. I think that's one of the things that this is the other thing that's optics. A lot of people are going to say, well, you just don't like it now because the people are the wrong skin color. I do not care who owns it. In fact, I loved what um, his name fell out of my head, but the Lester City owner. Uh, what he did with Lester. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yep. So I, I do not care about the skin color. It's about owners. I mean, we talk about fans versus owners. Now this is owners versus nation states. Yeah. It, it, this is this is entire countries. Abramovich was not a country. He Murderous was an oligarch and he was states. part of it. But Murderous. he's not a yeah, he's not a country. It's an entire country. If the US government bought Arsenal and started pulling this crap, everyone would be up in arms about it. And that's essentially what's that? Oh no, it's the royal family. Yeah, okay, you can't vote in the UAE. It, I, it's it's what yeah. it is. It's the country. And you look at you look at people trying to rip on. Well, uh, you know what about all the atrocities America's done? The American atrocities, I don't think, equivalent to what is actually going on in the Middle East. You Did we? Take uh, a guy that yeah. owns a baseball team out of Boston and tell me he's worse than the guy that beheaded a journalist in Saudi Arabia. I'm sorry, it doesn't add up. They don't add up. And, and it anybody, add up. you know, watching, listening, I, I don't care if you think that, oh, you know, well, they, you know, they should basically null and void each other out. But no, no, it doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's also a conflation of people. Like, I'm an American, yeah. so all American atrocities. He's a member of the family that did that to the journalist. Yes, yes. It's, it's, you're a little bit closer to home, and I, I, I'm the first one to say the sins of the father, not the sins of the son, but, I mean, actual blood money versus, yeah. it, I don't know. Let's talk about fun stuff. We'll have a fight of a different kind, because I can tell you right now, you guys are not going to agree. First, we're doing our tots, our lovely tots, our team of the season. Um, I'm going to override you on one player. Apart from that, you guys have at it. First one is going to be goalkeeper. Um, I still think... Um, oh, my God. I said his name so many times yesterday, and I can't remember. You don't get it. Yep. You don't get it, then. I still think that he <laughs> deserves a good shout. But um, no one gets points for guessing who Aaron's goalkeeper of the year is going to be, and no one gets any points for guessing who's Woodsy's goalkeeper of the year is going to be. So I'm going to go take a nap. You guys fight it out. Okay. Bye. <laughs> I, I mean, I think statistically the best keeper in the league was Allison Becker. He's the only reason why I think Liverpool finished, you would say, top half, let alone fifth. Um, I, I would I would easily say that um, his – saves and crucial moments alone how many one-on-ones he had um how many penalty saves he had i think he had two or three penalty saves as well um i i would say allison becker's got to be my my guy and i know you're gonna go with emmy martinez but i gotta i gotta go i gotta go alley on that i I just don't think i here's here's goals against in the 90s in the 90s i'll say uh one goal, one goal per game, per 90 for Emiliano Martinez. Allison gives up 1.16. That's a lot. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I will We're say really this. really splitting hairs, think, but like. I do think a lot of it is down to, I think, the organization of the Unai Emery defense. I think helped out with that stat a little bit as far as Emmy Martinez. If we're talking goals, goals for 90, then it's got to be Ederson. Are we picking Ederson? I've always said here – I'm going to throw – I think he's the most overrated here. keeper in I, the league, to be honest with you. Ederson is the best goalkeeper Brazil has. Oh, that, my that, God. No, that's factually no wrong. All right, Allison gets that is that factually spot wrong. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, he's not even better I than – I mean, goals for 90. He just won a UCL. He won a treble. Well, yeah. partly. He won actually – technically, Ederson won two out of three because he didn't start for but, I think if you if you put Allison Becker in Ederson's shoes, and you put Allison Becker in those games, I don't I don't do, does any team score against them? I, I really don't think anybody does. Um, I've and seen I, and if you put them. if you put Ederson in Allison Becker's shoes, Liverpool might be twelfth or eleventh in the table. All, All right. right. So one thing I want to bring up because I'm not actually going to keep my mouth shut for this. What is he saying? Statistically, Allison's the best goalkeeper. He's getting that because of, and it's called. Saved goals is what they're using. They're getting that from FB. It's an individual stat. Reference. That's why I go with it. It's an individual stat that tests 
the goalkeeper. What I think is interesting is Liverpool. So Allison, um, difference between expected goals and actual goals is nine point one. Tied with nine point one is Burned Leno at Fulham. Now I'm not saying that Burned Leno should be considered it because he he can't defend set pieces. He is incredibly good shot stopper, and that I think that's where that this is the crux of my argument. And I'm not saying that Allison doesn't deserve it. I'm just this is the crux of my argument. There is more to goalkeeping than just stopping shots. Um, Allison does other things very well, and he does other things much better than Burn Leno does. But if we're talking pure shot stopping ability, Burn Leno and Allison are technically level. Oof. Yeah. No, Burn Leno was always. There were times when Burn Leno was at Arsenal, he looked like the best shot stopper in the world. Just, we gave up a corner, and then he'd give up a goal. So it didn't matter. (laughs) I I would even throw in there Allison. Allison's intangibles, I think, are probably the best in the league, and I think they get oversought because of of what he does in net, um, and and who he expect people expect are the people in front of him. You know, Virgil Van Dyke had a terrible year. Um, Joel Matic was basically a ghost for for you know seven eight months. Joe Gomez might as well you know put his shorts on backwards and just walk back in the tunnel. He's terrible. Trent Alexander Arnold was playing right back when we all knew he wasn't interested in playing right back this year. Um, Fabinho was was non-existent. Henderson was non-existent. All these guys play in that for the majority of the season. Play in that spine, except for Trent. That spine's got to protect the keeper. If you can't do that, well, I mean, you're basically making a guy go one on one most of the time. So that's why I think Allison. His one on one stats were great. I think Allison is the best keeper, in, in my opinion. That's that's my end of of uh, debate for that one. <laughs> I'll let you guys figure it out. Um, I'm not even a. I, I can't argue the fact that he's got all these great accolades, right, Allison? I can't argue that. I can't argue that because I did say that in the group chat too. That <laughs> if we're gonna, the UCL I mean, thing, or I mean, out of tournament European stuff, and I was about to say, Emmy won a World Yeah, Cup, you're the one who I said. Cannot, I know, I know. That's why I said I pumped my brakes and I, I, I stopped. But like the intangibles, you want to go to the intangibles? I think Emmy is. He knows how to direct his defense. He knows how he knows how to beat one on one players on one on one. Who was it? Um, the end of the season. Oh, he made a beautiful leg save, just like he did in the World Cup. I mean, the guy makes you think that he's going to do one thing, and then he baits you doing another. And he's absolutely he's the most wonderful goalkeeper, and he should go nowhere. If you're I Emmy, mean, you're hearing this, do not go anywhere else. Um, anyway. His save percentage is at 74%, and Allison sits just below that at 72. And I understand, like, shutout percentages are a little bit lopsided because, I mean, we weren't good. We can't go there. David De Gea had the most clean sheets. We can't go there. That's what I <laughs> The stat's broken. I say it's a skewed stat. Uh, that's why I, I think that's you – know, there's a lot of team stats that show, you know, like – What's like the problem with the goalkeeper, though? Is yeah. that everything's based off of your team positioning? I was just about team. I was gonna bring that point up and I was gonna bring it onto the back of Matt's point, Woodsy's, when he was talking about how awful the team was in front of Allison this year. And it's like, well, that's why the team that's why the goalkeeper of the year is always from a mid table team. They're not so bad that they're letting in a ton of goals, but they're not so good that everyone says, Oh, well, it's just because they have so and so in front of them. Um, I am gonna make an executive decision because we still have now 21 players to pick after this. <laughs> I'm going to go Allison and I'm going to do it for one reason. And he was a real, he was, I mean, once a gooner, always a gooner, but that Emmy Martinez own goal against Arsenal. I guess that that's the one, that's Look, the difference. I got that's the difference thing. for me. Emmy Martinez and his dancing is far and away the best bit in the Premier League ever. No, I, I, I will say this. cannot match that. He may have if it was shit house, if, it was the yeah. there. <laughs> if it was shit house 11, Emmy Martinez is in, and we're already in the midfield at this point. We're not even <laughs> arguing anymore. I can say Andy Robertson fills the other 10 positions. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to defense. Yes, please. Left back, uh, just going to type them in because we all pretty much agree. Trippier had an absolutely amazing season. Uh, right back, right? 
Was is he? Like I don't. Right back. Well, all right. So I don't think we have a true left back actually. That's true. So I'm gonna put him there. Uh, we're kind of treating defense as as a whole. A blob. Um, you guys. Well, the, the, and this is where it gets interesting. Um, I'm gonna put Stones in because I think Stones absolutely deserves it. In fact, Tifo had a wonderful video arguing that Stone should be Player of the Season. Really? Yeah. What he no, what he was able to do from the back end in City was amazing, but it was more about ball movement and less about pure defense, and that's the issue. You start getting into this. I mean, I can't pick him because he was too injured, but if we're talking about overall most valuable person in the left-back position, if he was healthier for longer, it would need to be Zinchenko. If we're talking about overall most valuable person in the right-back position, there's a very good argument to have, maybe not this year, but in past years, that it's Trent Alexander-Arnold. But if we're talking about right back as a defender, it cannot be Trent Alexander-Arnold, nor could it be Zinchenko because Zinchenko doesn't defend as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue, right? So it's he played in this position versus he's a defender. And from this, we're trying to go from a defense standpoint. Okay. Our next uh, person is Botman. If I can spell. Uh, and we have... The last position open. So I'm going to throw some names out there. Um, I think there's there's two guys that got to get a clear shout. Um, Estupignan from Brighton. Uh, I thought he was the best. I thought he was the best probably overall fullback. I thought there were moments where the guy was just flawless. Uh, defending, he was more of a two-way for a lot of the year. Um, had a couple assists, I believe. Uh, had a goal. A couple goals. Um, I, I thought I saw Estupignan was great. But I can't overlook I can't overlook Nathan Ake either. He just stood out to me um, all season, and, and I, I I'm surprised at how uh, how he kind of turned it on at City because um, last year I didn't think he was I mean he wasn't a quarter of the player he is now. Um, and now he he looks like a completely different animal. You got anyone you want to add, Aaron? Uh, I actually, as much as we poo poo on Leeds, I actually going to pull somebody from Leeds. It's uh, Pascal Strauk. I thought he actually – what? I can't agree with that one. No? <laughs> How many goals did he let up against Liverpool this year? Well – Seven and well, two matches, six in one game. Okay, well, that was just an outlier. And personally, Millier's kind of terrible. I believe he also gave up five against City. Well, I can't Mill go again, ahead. I'm going to go with Millier. It was terrible. <laughs> I also <laughs> wanted to throw in – um, another Newcastle, and it was um, uh, shoot, Rodney. Dan Byrne. Dan Byrne. He was transitioning, so he did the whole Ben White thing, and I actually wouldn't mind if Ben White was in here either because I thought that he played really well as well. Um, but Dan Byrne had to cover for somebody out in the right back position, and he just stuck there. A tall. If we were going for right backs. And not just defenders. I, think, I would I, be making a hard, hard push for Ben White right now. I still think that Dan Byrne was the reason why Trippier was so good because he was able to trounce up the field, and then they were able to run a three-back system and cover, you know, um, have the attacking ability to always swing Trippier up top while still maintaining your defensive structure. I think Dan Burns' of evolution of big, tall CBs moving out to wide positions has influenced the game. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I, I mean, well-made points and I will probably put Dan Burns as a substitute under who I'm going to put. But for me, I think it has to be Ake. And the reason why is because he let City, when Kyle Walker just decided to lay an egg and have a horrible middle of the season, he allowed City to do a three at the back and still maintain just this wonderful defensive shape. And, I mean, we didn't even talk about Ruben Diaz. Yeah. It, it, this could very easily just be City's back line, and let's move on. Um, I think Ake was just so good, and I think his ability to just completely own the entire right half of the field because he didn't have an actual real wing back out there. 
Yeah. I think th- I think from a value standpoint, if that's how we're going to make this argument, I think he was just too good. Um, that being said, let's see how stuff suit works. Like, Dan Burn. Yeah. Yes. I feel like there you go. Uh, Honorable mention. <laughs> the fact that Burn's success and um, yep, I just dropped his name out of my melon. Give me right uh, right back. With ben White being able to transition was some uh, something that. Pep looked at and was like, okay, we could do the same thing too, where we have that inverted winger kind of style. And it's working for other clubs. Let's try it here. And I'm not like, obviously, Ake was very good and he was able to step in and be magnificent. But I'm saying that Pep was able to also implement the same thing that somebody, some other teams were doing. And I, and I, well, I agree with that. Um, if we're going to go with who did it first, then Ben White's got to be there because Ben White from game one was a right back. Dan Burns filled a need. Ben White was always going to be the right back this year. So yeah. until yeah. Thomas Party yeah. became the right back. So you know go enough. figure. This is all right. Uh, to who we agreed. I think we, we all agreed on uh, midfield. Tiffany, really? I believe. Yep. Oh, yeah, I mean, we did. There are, I mean, honestly, there should be an honorable mention for um, Del Polino and Kimarish. Yeah, those are the only the only two I think that that deserve. You know, you can even say Gundogan too, but I would even say that that compared to these guys, I think it's a stretch. Yeah, Gundogan because it came in too late. Um, That's where I was going with that. I feel like KDB and Odegaard are two of the best attacking minded midfielders. Like in the world right now. Yeah. Um, and then Rodri was just, again, it, he's so good. And he, he is such a, he, he takes advantage of any situation that's put in front of him. It's amazing. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. You saw Thomas party have like moments where he could do it, but Rodri just like that. He Always. eats, that's his lunch all the time. Is it is amazing like what he can do. Red cards and Rodri. Yeah. Like, that's also true. Challenges. <laughs> That's how I'm just saying. He's a damn good player, but my God, there's some moments where I'm like, boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, yeah, no, I think that's, I, I like that midfield. I think if you had, if you could pick any three midfielders in the world, you would really be hard pressed to find three better ones than that. I think yeah. he merged did great um, for a huge part of the season. And I'm glad that he's at least made like the substitute. And if you guys want to go back, um, at any point to add any substitutes, but I think those three's got to be it. Now on to where we don't necessarily agree again. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm going to go to this player because this player is obvious and easy. Uh, Neil Malpe, right? Yep, that's it. He's a guy. It's yeah. actually Danny Welbeck. Amazingly, we're going to have Theo Walcott on the right wing. So, well, you know what? <laughs> they both had decent seasons. <laughs> No, I'm serious. Danny Wilbank had a decent season. For, he did have a know, decent season, but come on. I'm not saying he's deserving. I'm just saying he had a decent season. All right. Talking as attackers and not necessarily as their positions. We had a lot of names get thrown out here. Um, I think Harry Kane is definitely deserving. If, we, if we're going to use the Allison argument of where would Liverpool be without Allison, I do not think Tottenham are in the top half of the table without Harry Kane. Now, the question is going to become, because Harry Kane is such an out-and-out striker, does he get a starting position or does he fall under as a substitute? Ooh, that's a good point. Because I do think that there are some players that just make their living on the wings and they should be brought up. I'm okay with either one. It's just a question that I have. See, I, where, where did they finish? Eighth? Tottenham? Ninth. Yes. Ninth? Ninth? Eighth. So I mean, if 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 we are going to use that, I mean, if would they have finished second? I mean, if you go four more games, at least you add four more games at the end of that season, they're going to finish second half either way, right? They were that bad. They were that bad that team. Um, and they I had definitely know, given up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they. I mean, they probably would end up there either way. That guy could. That guy could have scored forty goals. They were probably going to end up there. Um, Ah oh, man, that's a good that's a good point though. Um, 
You know what? I'd say put him in the starting lineup. 30 goals in a season is remarkable. Any is other pretty season? Darn good. Yeah. That's a that's a golden boot. Yeah. All right. Now now for the argument. The argument position. Uh, I'll let you guys go first. Why? Why do you want to not go first? You just want to be able to rebuttal. I'll go first. I'll go. Mohamed Salah. Come on now. He's he nearly became the first player to go twenty and ten in three seasons in the Premier League. Him and Thierry Henry are the only guys to do it twice. He almost did it a third time. Um, they're the only players that have ever done it twice. So I I would give him, you know, a leg up. I do think his. Uh, I mean, he is. I mean, if we're gonna, you know, we're gonna count Europe and all that stuff. He is one of the top five goal score, uh, goal contributions in Europe. Uh, Made it very ever. clear we're not counting Europe. All right, yep. all right. We're also not counting past seasons. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, he would have made it in last year too. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he, I, I do think he was the the only consistent uh, uh, player for us. Played every single game, uh, and I do think he even. Uh, you know, to a point in the big games came up clutch, scored a goal, scored a winner against city. I uh, had, uh, I believe two goals, uh, three goals, two assists against United uh, scored. a uh, another goal and another assist against uh, Newcastle Arsenal. He had a goal and an assist against Arsenal in that, that game at Anfield. Um, and I believe he had a, he had a, uh, an assist in the first game. I think he's the, Biggest big game player the league has outside of Erling Holland, um, or excuse me, outside of KDB. Uh, I think he's the biggest big game player the league has. I thought he proved it this year. So uh, there's my there's my pitch. For my- <laughs> I want to point out that that three goals, two assists, was against a United team that didn't have Casemiro, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I'm gonna say we take out the United match and the Bournemouth match, and he comes right back down to earth. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he had anything in that Bournemouth match. I don't think he even had an assist. I that nine 0 I don't, I don't think he had any goal contributions. I will throw out a guy who has been super clutch. His name's Ivan Tony. You talk about last minute clutchness against City for Salah. Ivan Tony did the same thing. I mean, the guy's an absolute monster. Twenty goals this season, and he got suspended the last two matches. You know, I yeah, had money. No. I had money on it. You'd say him. Oh well, I figure right. <laughs> I'm sure he had money on me saying it too. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> I don't bet, but that's a pretty oh. safe bet. <laughs> for me, and I, I know it's going to be my only real homer. For me, Bukayo Saka on the right wing was so good this year. He wasn't necessarily – he didn't have the total stats that Mohamed Salah did, but he double digits in goals, double digits in assists, played every single match. One of the most fouled players in the league, again, so Salah. I mean, that's deserving. That goes both. Um, Where he really speaks out, Salah is definitely a better finisher. He is better at progressions. He's better at take-ons. He's better at touches. He has almost as many touches in the box, and he blows Salah away from a defensive standpoint. His tackles and interceptions are way above where Salah is. Two slightly different types of players, but I think what Saka was able to give Arsenal on the right side, especially for the first half of the season when Arsenal were, you know, 50 points through 19 matches, was just immense. You know, I'm going to let Aaron decide if Salah goes first or if Saka goes first. Whichever one doesn't get it is getting the sub spot. You know, I have no problems with Mo Salah. I think Mo Salah is an amazing player. But for me, I think Saka was the best overall right wing player in the in England, definitely, maybe in Europe. You know what my problem is with both of these guys is that both of them tailed off at the end. For like they were phenomenal for two thirds into the season, and I. That's what's making it difficult. Maybe that makes them the same. I don't know. Uh, Technically, Holland's tailed off at the end. Holland didn't have to do anything at the end. Oh, now it's he didn't have to do anything. <laughs> now we're back to the goalie argument. He's really good. He just didn't have to do anything. He's just a, a goalie, but a striker at the same time, I guess. I don't know. I, you're killing me, throwing me like this. Um... 
I, I gotta go with Saka only because of how immense he was for so long of the season, such a long stretch of the season. And there was times where I just kind of forgot Salah was a goal scorer. There, there was times where he just was missing Salah goals. You know what I mean? Let me let me ask you this: if if their seasons were reversed and Salah had a better first half, um, the, like if Salah was better in the first half and fell off in the second half, where Saka did, and Sal and Saka had a terrible first half but was great in the second half, would you have flipped it? Because that um, that's no, I honestly said they they both had kind of the same season. They both had ups and downs. They both kind of felt – I felt like they both tailed off at the end of the season. Uh, I mean, it, even like Saka was hitting bangers and Salah was still hitting bangers. Did you see that Saka Salo, yesterday? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and Yeah. So, it just felt like Salah was kind of showing his age a little bit or – a little bit of his legs were dropping out because he was just missing goals that, you know, oh, yeah. you know, he he well, that, he that Liverpool, yeah, that Liverpool issue all in the first half of the season, that hangover from being in four finals the year before. Yeah, I, I, and you know, nothing, you see him miss a lot of penalties. It's not Mohamed Salah went went a year and a half of missing a penalty, right? And um, it's just which is a lot. It's just a tough like. It's a tough decision no matter what. You put me yeah. in put – you may be yeah. terrible. But, but it's okay because I'm going to Venmo you the 10 bucks. I said I'd Venmo you and everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like, like the whole Saka Sala. Should be in. <laughs> <laughs> the Saka Sala is a very nice little in the top right here. I like that. All right. That's our team of the season. Yeah. I dig it. Up. I dig it. it. It was a good season. It, it was it, definitely – it does go harder to figure out who Invincibles too, right there. Could this team actually do that? If you, I mean, that's what we're building, right? We're building that kind of. Who's the Who's the manager? There's only one guy to have done it. I mean, if it's manager from if it's manager from, right from now, this manager year, right now. Yeah. it's got to be Pep. It's yeah, got to really? be Pep. As much I, as I love Klopp, and I do like Klopp, I know a lot of people who hate him. I like him as much as I like him. Right now, Pep has a he he can get his guys to turn on and off when he needs to. If it was based off of last season, I'm going Unai Emery. If if it's based off of the long haul, I got to go Klopp or Pep. But I I thought Unai Emery was the he was my manager of the year last year. Taking a oh. team like that that was in 17th place to Europe, I mean that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm going to argue that they were only in 17th place because of Steven Gerrard and a cat randomly stepping on players' names to pick a starting 11 might have done a better job. <laughs> Your point is well made, and I have no problems with Uwe. Oh, I mean, I have talked you and I, Emery, up a lot. I'm very glad he's doing well at Villa. I, I think he's a very good manager. I think he's definitely in the top five, maybe even the top three for managers right now. You know what, Gary O'Neill is but... available for free. We can get him now. There you go. There you go. But the 17 to 7 thing is like, no, nah, that, was, that was mostly Gerard just being an idiot. <laughs> All right. Um, give me just a second. I'm going to drop this. I'm going to reset it. And then we're going to go for <laughs> the worst team of the year. This is fun. This might have the more, horrible, horrible. This might have more of a debate. And, and uh, I don't know. Like, we agree with quite a lot. I, I think it'll come down to the attack, in my opinion. Yeah, that's that true. Was a I think we agree with defense. Difficult to pick on, to be honest. I, I'm, I was a little flip floppy on some players. All right, uh, gonna go very quickly with the obvious choice. If I can just remember how to spell his name. B a z o n. Yep, that's exactly. I like statistically one of the worst goalkeepers, maybe ever. The bad B a d bad. It's it, either it, him or Millier, to be honest. Amelia's got to be up there too. That's a good one. But I, I think, think one Bazuna of the was just terrible. Bazuna, was, I, I said, like Bazuna was bad all year. He was like chum in shark infested waters. This is that's <laughs> not fair. Like that's what they did. They Southampton just bought academy players from City, and they're like, okay, go have fun. Right. <laughs> I, I will say though, it's, like it's surprising how many how many teams they're interested in this guy after the season he had. I, I thought nobody would want to touch him. Yeah, stop it. 
there, there's rumors about Italy, rumors about the Prem. Uh, Unreal. I, I, it shocks me. I don't think he's that good at all, to be honest with you. I mean, maybe uh, just because he's 20 years old. And that's they're like, oh, okay, well, we can fix that. And again, it comes back to the goalie argument. He had a horrible defense in front of him. Maybe he's really yeah. good. I all I know is just statistically this year, really bad. And I mean, really bad in the as individual goalie stats go. It still wasn't good. Yeah. I think goalie, goalie and striker, the two ends of the field are the ones that need to play with the most confidence more than anything else. Yeah. And he had no confidence at any point all year. And I do think that that plays into it. But. I mean, it was just, it was just bad. Yeah, yeah. That or Everson or Ward or literally anyone. <laughs> any any lesser player. Or this guy. Lurie's, oh, that's a good shout. That's a good yeah, shout. No, I mean, he was broken. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but he was also awful. Yeah, he did do have a bad. That's thing. Millie. How do you spell Millie's name, right? Sure. That was a M M E, I think. M E. Yeah, it's French, right? Isn't he French? Yes, it's super French. I don't know. They can turn. There you go. Something like that. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, um, so starting out, I think I, I – uh, if Woodsy, if you don't agree on this, I'm sorry, but Aaron and I are going to override you. Yeah. Lucano is an awful human being and maybe even a worse defender, and he <laughs> definitely belongs on this list. And that's hard to do. <laughs> yeah, right. It is hard to do. Uh, coming at player two. This is going to surprise a lot of people. This was Liverpool's player of the season in January. <laughs> but I do have to go with Luke. He, he, no player scored more goals against Leicester City in any time Liverpool played Leicester City than Wout Face. So I got yep. to give it to him. Poor old face. Mm, um, face. Coming up right back, because I think we're all going to agree on this. This is a little bit because of the price tag. But Kukurea was just yeah, Bugs. bad, very bad. Did not have a good season. I think there is a good player there, um, but it was not seen this season. That's very true of a lot of Chelsea. Mm. I mean, we could have very easily just made this the Chelsea team sheet and walked away. Uh, <laughs> but we didn't. Um, and for the last one, we have uh, Smith from Bournemouth. Hold on. I, I want to throw one out there. I want to throw one out Let's there. Let's hear it. Harry Maguire. I mean, the guy you know lost what? a starting gig to a, 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 a midget. Oh, left back. <laughs> I don't know why I did the whole name. I always do the whole name with him. It is. It feels right. Like, their other Maguire shouldn't have to carry the stain. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with McGuire and McGuire's a really good point. Um I think I think the way he was played by Eric Ten Hogg did not help. However, you were the captain of that team, and you went from being the captain to not being able to get a boot on the field in like two weeks. Yep. You did oh, it was like a pariah, it was awful. Listen, if that man played one more game this year, Liverpool isn't in Kazakhstan on Thursdays. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tell you right now. If it that is man that played point. one more game, it's that point. No I, and give it up. We were talking about the measure. Uh, Lissandra Martinez actually played very, very well. But I do wonder how much of that was just he's not Harry Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> that makes so much sense. <laughs> So All right. Uh, two really bad center backs in the United's defense. Now it's only one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, moving up. I don't know. Minfield. Minfield's got an awful lot of choices, I think. I, I'm going to tell the obvious players. one out there. Arthur needs to get in there. I don't care. Anybody yeah. Does Arthur anybody does right need to get in there. Arthur Listen, guys, Taylor Swift people. is going to be at Anfield in next summer. I'm going to tell you right now, she's already going to have more minutes than Arthur will ever played at Anfield. <laughs> It might be that bad. It really might be that bad. bad. You got two nights. That's more time than he had there. (laughs) All right. We got Arthur. We have, and I think this is more than fair, Jesse Lingard. I I don't understand how that happened. I don't understand how they got him. I don't understand any of this. This makes no sense. Oh, I have a, uh, hold on. I have a substitute. I just want to 
double check how to spell his name real quick. Okay. Well, you want to spell us and then hold spell it. Yeah. Well, I can never actually pronounce his name either, and that's the issue. Uh, uh, is it Langlet or Langley or whatever? The center back Langley. from Tottenham. Langley. Langley. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a you good sure? One, yeah. Yep. He's actually from loaned in from Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah, well, Barcelona doesn't always get winners. All right? Everyone makes mistakes. He played so bad, Eric Dyer got starting minutes it's true. for England again. Because <laughs> that's how good Eric Dyer looked next to him. Oh, well, that's fair. That's how bad he was. And quite frankly, I kind of want to just put Emerson Royale under Lacano, but he did have a couple decent matches. Yeah. So it was okay. But he had some absolute screamers, too. Just awful, awful matches. That's a terrible defense. I, I will tell you right now, that defense, that drips goals, man. I mean, you're probably <laughs> looking – I mean, just on the defense alone, you're probably giving up at least four. You know what's wild is we didn't – Bianco's going to get burned every time. Cucurello's going to be up here getting his getting his hair braided by the bench warmers. And, and you know, you got Face and Maguire are going to be defending each other. So. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> They're definitely going to make it happen. Uh, next player is Will Hughes. From – fell out of my head, I believe, Crystal Palace. Palace. Yep. Palace, yeah. Really, really bad. I mean, at one point he had three times the amount of yellow cards that he did starts. No, that wasn't him. That was another player. I thought that was Ooh. Smith. That, yeah, that was Smith. Sorry, I've been doing 10-hour days at work on top of moving. I'm very, very tired. Yeah, Will Hughes had an absolute streamer. Um, actually, under Arthur, it hurts me to do this, but I'm going to do – Brennan Aronson. He was really bad. He was really, really bad. I'm gonna add one more underneath Hughes. I know you're not gonna you're not gonna like this rat, but Fabio Vieira. You know. My only problem with Vieira is he like never played. <laughs> if we're gonna do the minutes argument, and I we're gonna do the minutes argument, but I'm okay with it. But he looks I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not against Vieira. Vieira had that wonder goal against Brentford early on yeah. in the season, or Bournemouth, and did nothing else. And he didn't do well in Europe either. No. He looks like a lost little puppy dog, and he was one of the main reasons why anytime Arsenal got off their main eleven, never understood uh, where, where his he, he really fits in that midfield. To be honest with you, he needs to be he needs to be closer to where the Odegaard's playing. And I think they're trying to play him in a role that he's, he's just not used to. Um, he's more yeah. of that, that attacking mid that needs to be on the edge of the box instead of, you know, 10, 20, you know, yards back, sitting, you know, almost above the uh, the midway line. So it's a weird, weird little situation they got there with him. I think it'll pan out. I, I mean, a lot I don't of- know where – I mean, I don't know. At this point, I'm not sure. I thought it was only because now, now with Havertz coming in, yeah. If we get Rice as well, I, I, I don't know where he plays. He's a cup. Yeah. He's a cup uh, player. Yeah. I mean, I mean, domestic cup player. That's that's what I'm trying to get at. Oh, sorry. Just realized he has an S. Oh, yeah, that's he, right. Oh my God, he does have an S. Um, if we're doing spell check. Uh, our uh, our left back there needs a. <laughs> yep, doesn't have the C. Ooh, we're getting there, guys. Oh no, he does. Hold on. No, you need a C. Leonco, yeah, C's off. in the wrong spot. Yeah. There we go. Look at that. Hey, no. Um, if we're doing complete lack of minutes, um, then. Oh, I feel yeah. like. Calvin Phillips has so to be obvious. in there. Why do we not think of that? It was very obvious. In fact, Calvin Phillips may be above Lingard. And he's At least still Lingard got to English play. It, it, is, it is less, it is less, <laughs> it's less of an argument to not play in City than it is to be that bad at Forest. <laughs> oh, I didn't play a lot in City, but hey, it's City. And it's like, this, I didn't play, the, I played like crap in Forest. It's like, well, you got to do better than that. Oh man! All right. Uh, moving on to attackers. This I I do think I think there's going to be a little bit. Um, so Darwin Nunez up. T- no, I'm just kidding. Oh my god! Uh, so <laughs> right wing has to be Anthony. I think absolutely. I, I, I agree. 
that price and left wing has to be Richarlison. I agree with both of those. I agree with both of those. I'm so okay it's just them. it's just the striker then. Maybe we're only going to have a problem with the striker. Man, I don't know. I think Mudrick should be. Mudrick, you can move Richarlison to that number nine and put Mudrick on that wing. And I, no, I still way. think Anthony doesn't deserve to be in there versus Mudrick. I think as the most expensive attacking player brought in uh, uh, this season, I think Anthony has to be up there for the output he had. He, he, he had no impact, if you really think about it. They were better at the end of the season. They made Europe after he got injured. You know, like, I, that's another good shot right there. Aaron brought him up, and so, I do too. agree. I mean, from Barcelona, supposed to be the savior, and he just wasn't. Yep. Um, my only problem with Mudrik, and I'm, I'm hesitating on Mudrik because half a season and you're coming into the dumpster fire that was Chelsea. But you're supposed he to did not perform, favorite. and he was he cost a lot. From Anthony, I think is Anthony. I think is an obvious, obvious choice. Yeah. Um, he just he has no left foot. <laughs> they, no, they, right they, no right foot. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah right foot. Sorry. Foot. Yeah, he only has a left foot. The uh, United just went out and said Arsenal got Pepe, so we need to go get Anthony. Like it's the same, way Pepe overpaid. Again. Yeah. Well, I almost <laughs> want to put Pepe under there, <laughs> even though he didn't play. It just it was it was awful. It was so bad. I would even um, I would throw as a backup for Mudrik Sterling. I thought he was awful this year with Chelsea. I actually, I kind of want to put Sterling and then Mudrick under him. We can have an all Chelsea because Sterling had the entire season. He was there the entire time. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do that. I wouldn't mind that. I don't want to come off as like this Chelsea Arsenal hater. fanboy who's putting all the least favorite people in the top, but all five of those guys had really bad seasons. Just like really bad seasons. I kind of want to say Leon Bailey. He was not great this season. But he at least had a stretch where he was good, right? I, I suppose, mean, yes. But I Charleston just, had more cards for taking off his shirt and goals that he didn't true. score than actual goals. I guess maybe just I'm so critical of Leon Bailey because I want him to be good because he's so damn good for like – FIFA video games and shit like that. And I gotta separate <laughs> he was, that. But. He was great at, at Leverkusen too. <laughs> oh my god, he's so good! And I just, I want that player. Give me that player. But uh, actually, I have someone else. I have someone else that um. Are you gonna put Aaron is gonna Aaron love. Jordan? Aaron's gonna love this edition. Yeah. Oh yeah. Patrick Manford was very bad. That guy. He was very very bad. That's a good one. I can't stand him. I'm so glad he's back in the championship. Another, another one that uh, that I kind of want to throw out there, but I, I don't think he's on this list. But I, I mean, he comes to mind as somebody you would. Not a bad one. Um, <laughs> whatever happened to Che Adams? He was never good. What do you mean? What happened? To him? <laughs> I mean, he, had, he wasn't. But I mean, he had that one. I mean, he had half a good season last year at the end of the end of the, end of the year. This year, I mean, I don't. I honestly don't remember actually watching him play. Well, again, when you have a, a bunch of City Academy players playing in the Premier League, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to have – holes are going to be exposed. Yeah. All right, quick. We have a lot more substitutes. Let, let's I complete it out. <laughs> Someone else throw cool. out another center back. That was awful, so we can just complete this because then we can have a full sub team. If it was Europe, I'd say Joe Gomez. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, uh, I feel like there's someone from Leeds we're still missing. I was looking at West Ham. Maybe. Oh, you know what? Skamaka's not on here. Oh, that's uh, true. That's but I still one. think Abba was worse. Because Yeah. You know what, though? I'm actually going to do this. Okay. He had a full season and did nothing. He was injured. Still, Mudra came into a dumpster fire of a season Order at Chelsea. Mind. If he's still Never this mind. bad next year, he'll be the first name I put on the list. Damn right he will. But I, I don't who who comes into that Chelsea team in January and does well. Even Enzo Fernandez didn't do nearly as good as he was doing elsewhere. Yeah. Who does anything? I mean, Conte came back and just stopped the bleeding. 
I don't know. You think it's worth it to do one more? I wanted to throw out Seamus Coleman, but he's just old. So <laughs> just old. <laughs> if you're old, but you're there, it's still bad. Um, I think we can be all right. I think we wait, can be good. Wait, wait, I got one. I got one. I got one. Okay. Dilo Carrer, I thought was probably the worst uh, overlooked defender in the in the league this year. Dilo Carrer, Carrer from uh, West Ham. Well, you see, he he had more own goals this year than than I think any player in the league. Well, then I speaking. guess he does because if he beats face, he definitely deserves he it. He was close. I mean, if he's not there. He's close. Um, those guys are one too when it comes to own goals. Um, felt like every time I looked up, the guy was scoring on his own net. Uh, Bangers. You know, yeah. <laughs> Bangers. I would say Kilo Carrere is, is the other guy to throw on the list. I'm just looking up how to spell his name so I don't screw uh, it up. R E R, I think. Look at that spelling whiz. So we don't know if that's you, right yet. Were you in the fourth grade spelling bee? Were you a champ? I bet you were a champ. I spelt face right, and it isn't spelt <laughs> like that, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it is if you're him. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. Cool. I go with that. I can oh. I can totally ride with that. All right. How okay. many how many goals does our, our team of the season score on this team? <laughs> score? How many goals do they score on this team? 32. Yeah, 28. 32. I in thought a, 32 and I go, match, wait a minute, that's a Chelsea score. In, 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 in a 90 <laughs> minute match, we are definitely, I said nine innings, sorry. In a 90 <laughs> minute match, uh, double digits. It's got to be double digits. By the way, I love where Woodsy just froze. That's amazing. Yeah, right. Can that be the thumbnail? Please screenshot it. Hold on, can I? I mean, I have to edit all of this. Oh well, that's fair. I'm still gonna try to get it now, so it's I have it. Yeah, he lost. Yep, that's guy. that. That's in there now. He is out. He is out. But we are gonna keep that, guys. If you want to watch the magic happen, this is how it happens. <laughs> there we go. Now it's even bigger. Oh, oh now he's gone. I gone. Booted it. Damn it. I just put it in the chat. I think it'd be funny. Anyway. Um, what do we have left to do now, though? Or do we want to just? <sighs> oh, we had that. Our- Let's talk some transfers. We got transfers, man. Oh, that's too bad. Woodsy would love this part. Yep. No, well, I'm sure Woodsy will be back. We hope so. He always comes back. Anyway, uh, transfers. Jude Bellingham to Madrid. Let's start off with that one because <sighs> who saw that coming? Yeah, everybody. <laughs> the world. Um, Leipzig gets Sesko. Leipzig gets Sesko. Sesko. Yep. Sesko. No, that's one of his. Uh, Villa get Tielemans on a free. I yeah. I think that's great for you guys. I did not. No one thought that's where he was going. The book, the odds makers did for some reason. I was like, well, we'll see when he signs the, you know, the contract. See what happens, but. I think this is a good transfer. One, it's free. He did. They did pay a lot of money to convince him to come and play. He's still 26, 27. He's got good for a couple experience. bangers. He does throw in a couple bangers. It's depth. And he's lazy. And well, you know, I actually was looking up. He won. I think it was he was in the top ten for winning. Was it interceptions or uh, making tackles in the middle third of the field so i don't know how true lazy is yeah because he won't go back to he won't go back to the defending third so if he's going to tackle you it's got to be now well i think well so there's that part where you know you play on a dumpy team so you give less than what you're yeah 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 so let's hope that we get the team lemons that they sign at the beginning of the four-year contract and not the end of the four-year contract but uh Woodsy's back, but before we get his thoughts on anything, I'm just going to do Havertz to Arsenal. Uh, a lot of Arsenal fans are lukewarm on this. First of all, I will pick Chelsea's bones all day. You need to get on the train with that. Secondly, um, I think that if we play him as a Xhaka replacement, 
It is brilliant. And on top of that, everyone says, I don't know where he slots in. I don't know where he slots in. If we're actually going to take on teams like City, if we're actually going to compete in the Champions League, we need to start spending that amount of money on players that aren't guaranteed playing time. Yeah. That's what it is. If they're going to agree and buy in, that's where we're at. And if they're not going to do that, then see you. You know, we have Reese Nelson. Oh, he's going to be gone. He's going to be gone. There's no way he stays. He stays. Why? I have a better chance of winning trophies here. Yeah, I can go get starting time at Southampton in the championship, but I don't want to do that. You know, so I, I like the Havertz signing. I think Havertz was one of the few bright spots in a very bad Chelsea season. I know some people had Havertz on uh, the worst team of the year. I think, I mean, he was on the worst team of the year. He was on Chelsea. <laughs> so let's see what he does with a good team surrounding him. I don't think he is a world beater. I don't think we're going to win the Prem now because we got him, but I do think he's a pretty decent signing. Uh, Woodsy, I'm not going to start off with McAllister. I'm going to start off with, how are you going to feel with Milner and Blue next season? Uh, he, dude, I got to be honest. He looks good. He looks good. I, I think it's a good good step for him. Um, obviously, I didn't think there was going to be with the amount of incomings that I think Liverpool need in the midfield. I think his, his time was just about up. There was talks about a one-year deal. Um, I never really thought that was the case, to be honest with you. Um, I, I think he's actually going to fit that team perfect. This is a team that's going into Europe now without a player on their team that had played in Europe. He's the first one. So, I mean, I, I, this is a team that, that I think needed that veteran expertise to go in there, big games in Europe, for them at least, and mm -hmm. and kind of take <clears throat> over. And, um, and, you know, instruct guys on how the atmosphere is going to be and get the team, you know, almost kind of – be a cheerleader because I don't think he starts to be honest with you. I think he's going to be coming off the bench. Thirty-eight years old. I mean, he's got to be coming off the bench. Um, but I think he adds the the veteran quality that that you really can't replace. And to be honest with you, I was hoping he would just retire and become a coach at Liverpool. That's what I was hoping because he was that important to the backroom staff, to the locker room, uh, to to what the coaches wanted to do to help the players in the field execute it, get the young players to understand. Uh, and it was kind of that leader. You know, everybody get in line, follow me, let's go. That's what he was. And I think he's going to be fantastic there, to be honest with you. I agree. Uh, just so everyone's clear, it's Brighton. I said in blue, like there's not 1,500 blue teams. <laughs> uh, and then – yeah, it ain't Chelsea. Uh, we talked about Jude Bellingham to Madrid, Alexi McAllister to Liverpool. Um, great signing. Anyone who picked him up would have been great signing. I know you're going to gush over him. What I think is amazing is it was, what was it, 45? 35 million. 35. How did That's no one else? Deal. So it looks like, I guess what happened was Liverpool start, talked to him a lot earlier in the season, went into this contract, found the clause, and was like, all right. They, they made contact. So the deal, from what I'm hearing, was done in April. Pretty much done, dusted in April. Um, they had the, the agreement already with McAllister. It was just a matter of going to trigger what was the, the release clause. Um, there was rumors about City with Gundogan leaving. He was the perfect Gundogan replacement. Um, that never materialized. Uh, it, looked, it looked as though uh, Kovac, uh, Kovacic was going to be the replacement for, for Gundogan. So they moved off of him. And that just gave Liverpool a free run. And I'll tell you, man, the, the guy is going to be phenomenal. He's the he's the exact number 10 that I don't think we've had uh, on that, that left-hand side since Philippe Coutinho. Coutinho. Um, maybe not as creative, not as uh, not in, you know, not as much flair. Uh, but I think he's going to be go be able to go in there, do a job. He's got good pace, he's got good um, he's got a good motor on him, which I think we lacked. With obviously with Henderson, Milner, Fabinho, guys like that who are just slow in midfield. He's gonna be perfect, man. He's he's actually the one of the perfect signings I think we could have got. I agree. I think there's also a certain point where I think he did pick Liverpool. I think he, yeah. you know, it, it it's not just about who has money and who do they want. He is so happy to be at Liverpool. And it, it does kind of feel like, you know, people talk about Arsenal even in their bad years, you know, it's the different knock. They come and it's Arsenal and it's all this history. United does it with players all the time. You're, you're uh, I think for you. him, Liverpool was just, this is where I want to be. I think, I don't know if it's Klopp. I don't know if he grew up a Liverpool fan. I don't really care. I'm glad he ended up where he's happy. I would have loved to see him. I know we were, I mean, we were associated with him in January. I don't know how true any of that actually was. Mm -hmm. um, but 
especially when it's a release clause and it's that low. I think a, and no one else seemed to be in for him at any point. There's no way no one else was in for him. Yeah. I think the agent was just like, sorry, this has been done since April. He wanted to go one place and that was that. So it always feels good when you got a player that you know they want to be there. Yeah. So that, that's great. His father. Say it again? Maybe. Wasn't his agent his father? His agent is his father's agent. Uh, um, so, so the way Liverpool also, you got to think of it this way too. I know it's a crappy way to think about it, but Liverpool is one of, if not the highest when it comes to agent salary fees too. So, I mean, there's always, there's always that thing you can throw in there. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's as big as, you know, the likes of Real Madrid, the likes of, of uh, PSG and stuff like that. Oh. But um, I think they were first or second highest in the prime last year, as far as agent fees for, for incoming players. So they, they, they do good on that front. I'm not going to lie. Do I like it that way? No, because I, I think I think that should be a factor, but maybe it was. Who knows? It's a little cheap throw-in. Yes. It's a deal. Kind it's always of a factor. Yeah. It's always a factor. I mean, yeah. then again, that's also the reason why um, Drew Bellingham didn't go, go to Liverpool. So. <laughs> we speaking, of, speaking of players who want to be someplace, mm-hmm. Messi is at Inter-Miami, and apparently he announced that he was going to Inter-Miami before the deal was done. Oopsies. Yeah, I think that's kind of interesting. It was this whole, where am I going? Where am I going? Uh, everyone was hoping for that. Not everyone. Seems like everyone on the internet was hoping for the Barcelona reunion. Yeah. But now he's going to be getting two footed tackled in, in the MLS <laughs> on a very, very hot day. It's just the way it is. I you see the I, deals he got throughout, throughout that. Like, he's got a part of Apple TV steak. He's got, like, He's got every little thing he could possibly imagine. It's almost like he got a Saudi deal without getting a Saudi deal. I, I think the, go there. you can even add on to that, Aaron. The biggest thing he might have got out of that, that TV deal is huge. Was it ownership too? Ownership. That's the yeah. one. That's the one. I think because he sees this as like, a, this is a monumental shift. It happened with Pele, you yeah. know, back, back in the, the 70s. It's going to happen, you know, look at what it did with Cristiano going to Saudi Arabia. True. Look at the amount of money that he generated just going to Saudi, and that league's on its way up now. This is kind of what I think. I know, right? I wish yeah. I wish it wasn't. Dumpster. But I think this is kind of what Messi's seeing as he saw what Cristiano did in a country like that. You actually have a more established country when it comes to the league um, and what they what they're trying to produce. Structure and I think in general, yeah. Structure in general. I think that's what he's looking at too. Um, and a place for his family. I mean, I, then again, he did pick one of the worst states I think he could pick, but whatever. <laughs> no, not um, true. No, not true. Because now they can't hit him for taxes. Oh, well, I, oh, I was talking about, I was talking about like family in general. Florida. Kids. Yeah, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you know, Messi is finally going to become that Florida guy, you know, yeah. that you see in all the, the, uh, Florida the articles. Florida. <laughs> so I, I could see, I could see that becoming something pretty funny if he, if he does stink it up, but. I don't think he will. He's, he's the best player I think I've ever seen. Um, I, I think he's going to rip this league to shreds. I, I don't think – what else sucks is pick the team in last place, dude. Yeah. Pick the team in last I, place. <laughs> they were – they're on a five-game, six-game losing streak that yeah. I last time knew. I don't remember. I, I haven't looked up. They're so know. bad. They – they. Um, uh, I don't think there's there's a team that that is quite – how do you put it? Uh as putrid and uh, it, it, from top to bottom, there's not a good player in the team, but it looks like they're giving Messi the reins to be manager as well. Cause it looks like um, Busquets is coming. I was going to say uh, Jordi yeah, Alba's Barcelona coming. or you in, in, in Miami. <laughs> so they were going to try to get Luis Suarez. He's at Gremio right now in Brazil. Yeah. And there's a story going around that what he was going to do was retire. And because he has this, this knee, this nagging knee injury, right? Yeah. He's gonna retire and then come out of retirement for Messi, but Gremio was like, no, 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 no. You can't. No, we want some money. Yeah. You give us some money and we'll have, have, let it happen. So, I thought that was kind of a, a funny little thing to throw in there. But I, I think you put. He's gonna try to create his own super team. You know, we saw it with the with the Miami Heat. You know, with LeBron and Bosh and Wade. Right. This is, this is he's Messi's trying to create a brand. He's, yeah, he's yeah. creating a brand right now, like Tom Brady, essentially. He's. He's doing a brand in America. That's what's happening. I would say that's probably going to be the, the hottest selling jersey in sports next All year. All tickets were sold. Can uh, guys, guys, 
Yeah, you can say all those names all you want. You're missing the biggest one. Thierry Henry. No. no. The reason why Inter Miami is a thing. David Beckham. David Beckham did this deal years ago. We were in high school. We might have been in middle school. He did the same deal years and years ago. True. And Messi looked at it and went, hey, that's my ticket. You know, and I, I I agree with everything else you guys were saying. Sorry, I just got a call from my realtor. Uh, when you buy a house, it never ends. <laughs> but it was a good call, so life's okay. Uh, good. Yeah, something needed to be fixed, and the sellers are going to fix it, and we don't have to, so it's always Hell great. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, but, yeah, no, it did, David Beckham did it, and he's the reason why Inter Miami is a thing, and now Inter Miami is doing it, and it's just – I find it interesting how it continues on, but – um, other notes we have Mbappe won't renew at PSG. I don't believe any of that, and it has nothing to do with the Premier League. Let's move on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he has been going to Real Madrid every single transfer window since he moved to PSG. Maybe since he was good at Monaco. I don't know. I don't really care either. Because if you ask me, Real Madrid got their guy in Jude Bellingham. Yeah. And, and it looks, and they, got, they just got Hosolu. Yesterday, who I don't know how in the world this guy is at Real Madrid. If you look, look at what he was when he was in the Premier League, remember Hosolu from uh, Newcastle? Yeah, yeah. he was yeah. awful. He was awful. Well, yeah. That was the whole Martin. What about a late bloomer? Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, so they, they they just brought him in, and now there's rumors that they uh, obviously you got him. He's got you know Jude's wearing the the Zidane number now, which is kind of I thought that was a neat choice to be honest with you, but um, they're still looking at attackers. And I do think I, I do think PSG tries to cash in on him at some point. You can't let the best player, I mean, the best young player in the world, walk free. You definitely cash in on. Him. You got. You definitely do. You, you, well, you get a hundred million. Potentially, I mean, I I think PSG is going to look at Neymar and Mbappe and Messi, and they may not have been the three players that they needed, but they were the three players that were going to bring them the most amount of money outside of football. Yeah. And you don't lose two of them in the same transfer window. I'm going to throw this little wrench in this whole thing. So obviously, we're, earlier we were talking about the Saudis doing all this mischief behind the scenes, right? Um, if Qatar buys United, does Mbappe or Neymar go to United? Neymar. We already said it in the live show. It's Neymar. Yeah, it's Neymar. We already talked about it's Neymar. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I would think I would think that's that's something you got to think about it down the road. Maybe not. I mean, if it, you know things have to fall into place, but um, I would I, I could either see I mean, realistically, that or he goes uh, into Miami. Realistically, by the time everything gets done, it won't be Neymar. It will be someone else. But if the Saudis had bought Manchester United, then I would be seeing Neymar to United. Oh yeah, not the yeah. Saudis, the, the Qataris. If they had done that, I would be seeing Neymar to United right now. That a hundred percent. All right, guys, it's fun as always. Um, I'm not sure if we have other stuff we want to talk about this season. If we do, there will be a part three. If not, maybe we'll keep it a part two. Trilogy? A trilogy. <laughs> maybe we'll turn it into a cycle and a saga. I don't know. But what I do know is we're about a hundred, not a hundred. We are about an hour and twenty minutes into this. And I have daughters and a wife who want me to go do stuff. So <laughs> we got to peace out. Anyone have any final thoughts? No. I, I think uh, I, I, I'm going to say this. I think I think uh, the Premier League should have an embargo. Put it out tomorrow morning. Do it. I want to wake up. I want to see some good news like that. That's what I'm hoping. That, that would be very good news. That would be very good news. What about you, Aaron? In a positive way. Uh. Make sure you apply sunblock, everybody. Yep. <laughs> and uh, spay and neuter your pets. Oh, Say yes. Oh, classic. classic. <laughs> All right, guys. This has been Swinging at Shins. If you are still with us, please subscribe if you haven't already. Please like. Please leave a comment. Please say, hey, we had a little bit of great back and forth with uh, John. I think his name, I don't remember what his name was. John something, Man City fan. Love that kind of engagement. Engagement is great for us. So anything like that. I'm going to start remembering to do this at the top and not at the bottom. But, hey, don't worry about it. If you're still here, just say hi. That works for us. Yeah. All right. Everybody, have a good week. Adios.
Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for listening. Links for anything that you could be interested in, whether it's the YouTube channel, our podcast links, our social media links, everything's in the description below. Thank you very much for listening.